If you're a Bet and Tina fan, then this video is for you because today we're going to be going over absolutely everything Bet and Tina from the season three premiere last year. And that means going over Easter eggs, hidden details, callbacks, throwbacks to the original show, parallels to the original show, and just absolutely everything. I'm also going to be talking about some of the stuff I learned when I was on the Elward Generation Q set when they were filming episodes 9 and 10, and also some information from the plethora of people that I speak to that run the show, produce the show, write the show, direct the show, light the show, and general info I've been able to gather over the last couple of months while they've been filming. And we're going to be talking about the upcoming season trailer that premiered at the end of episode 1, but our main focus is all of the stuff that you may have missed about Bet and Tina in season three, episode one. So make sure you're subscribed and let's get right into it. So straight away, we pick up from our season two cliffhanger where Tina has turned up on Bet's doorstep. And this throws me straight back to the original show and season two, the premiere of season two, where Tina has gone to Bet's house and Bet's waiting for her, even though Tina asked her specifically not to be there. I needed to see you. You don't want to give me anything I need, okay? That's fair. Nothing's fair, Bet. You broke everything that meant anything to me. Well, I hope you had fun blowing off some steam with the carpenter. They argue, and Tina ends up leaving, and Bet screams her iconic, Tina! Tina! <laughs> So that went down in Elward history and I'm sure this episode will too. I think it already has because we see Tina leave and Bet scream another iconic moment. Now in this scene, they do have this exchange where Tina's saying that she's in love with Bet too and that she's loved her all her life and Bet says, I've loved you all of mine. Of course she really can't you. be with her because I'm in love with you too. I've loved you my whole life. And I've loved you all of mine. I just wish that you were fucking better at it. So this really reminded me again of the original show and I'm gonna say that a lot. And <laughs> season one, the episode titles Looking Back where Tina tells Jenny and everybody else the first time that she met Bet, and she talks about this concept of first, last and forever. Tina, I didn't know that Bet was your first girlfriend. Yeah, first, last and forever. God, am I gonna go to my grave and that will be the only woman I've ever slept with. I look at her and I think, and we didn't really ever hear that much again on the show but it is like quite a popular term that people use and I am going to talk more about this specific episode later on in the video and what happens in it but I did also want to draw your attention to the title of this episode which is Looking Back and I don't know whether you saw on Instagram but Showtime did release all 10 episode titles and it seems pretty fitting that the episode that shows us the first time Bet and Tina meeting was called Looking Back and the season three finale, which is going to be the last episode that they feature in and there's going to be the Bet and Tina wedding that all Bet and Tina fans have been waiting on. So it seems pretty fitting to me that that episode is titled Looking Ahead. But that's not the only parallel from Looking Back and we'll talk about that more later in the video. But next we flash forward forward about a year and we're going into August 2022 so they're a little bit behind the real world timeline and Bet and Tina are moving Angie into college with Shane and Alice. While Bet's pulling up a college student actually hits her car and I'm sure a lot of people thought of the season two scene where Bet is in a car accident actually she is in the the wrong in this one and when she gets out she absolutely basically nearly murders a man in the street. <laughs> the fuck up? Do you fucking understand me, you fucking idiot? Or do I need to scream like you like a fucking insane savage? If one sorry bitch. What makes you think I'm not already? What makes you think I'm not already? And has an iconic bet breakdown. So Tina's observing this and thinking, oh, this, I thought bet was going to bite her head off. Hi, are you okay? I can't believe he didn't bite that girl's head off. Oh, well, we're all gonna die, so it's <laughs> a little bumper, right? It's nice to see you. Me too. So this is an immediate little switch because 
Tina had originally said a few minutes ago that she's not going to go to the fundraiser that night, but after seeing the way Bet is at this induction day, she quickly changes her mind and says she is going to go to the auction that night. Are you gonna go to the fundraiser tonight? Yeah. You? Also, we do hear at the end of the moving in scene that Bette answers the phone and she's talking to Pippa. Hi, Pippa, can you hear me? You made it to Johannesburg. And Tina does kind of register this. And then when we do go to the Dana's auction night, Alice and Shane are telling Tina that yes, Bette apologized to Pippa and ended things in a good way where they're friends. So I'm sure Tina was like, hmm, this is different from the previous times where Bette's ended things with people because obviously it's always been a drama <laughs> with her and her and Tina. But also the way that things ended with she who shall not be named, the car carpenter and Jody. So there was a lot of, you know, issues there. Okay. I'm going to tie it all together in one second because I'm so excited to tell you about these parallels that I found. But first we got to talk about this meta conversation about Tina's season nine. What season are you in? Oh, um, you got picked up for season nine. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Now the showrunner is pissed. Oh, no. So I have to fly to Toronto tomorrow, you know, just to iron out a lot of the creative conflicts that are about to blow up in my face. <laughs> and in case you didn't notice, this is season nine. We are having a meta moment here. <laughs> I'm be in your show. Very You're meta. In my show. Very, very meta. <laughs> The OG show has six seasons. Gen Q has one, two, three. So here we are in season nine. And if you watched my interview when I was on the L Word set, how many times do I say that? I never get tired of it with Marja Lewis Ryan. She sat down and talked to me, who Marja is the showrunner, in case you don't know. And she said there was a big kind of upshake this season. A lot of the writers, well, pretty much all of the writers were changed out. The producers remained the same and the exec producers remained the same but even Marsha got a new assistant, Monica. And I mean, that that was part of it too, is like this season, I we like changed out a bunch of writers. I have a new assistant. We were like just trying to like plug into the community more and just be like, what else is out there? Mm -hmm. What do I not know? And like having 25 year old writers on the show means that they're saying, listen to Kehlani. Yeah. Kehlani tweeted about the show, you know? Like, yeah. I don't know that. I don't know what Twitter is. <laughs> I don't do that. But, like... Best to stay up there. <laughs> well, I, I mean, like, I, my brain just does, isn't wired that way. But, like, I want people around me who know what's happening in our community yeah. and, like, who are out there. And we're all having, like, very different experiences. And, you know, my staff is coming in t telling me about horoscope parties. And that's so fun. Lots of other changes. They have moved to a new lot. They built out new sets because previously they used to go to the Semi-Tropic in East LA, which I will be in East LA at the Semi-Tropic for the finale, which I'm so excited about. But now they don't go there anymore to film. They have Dana's on the set. And I'll put a little clip in here because I thought it was really funny when Sophie and Finley were filming that scene sitting out because that is literally a road. That is the end of the set. They've built Dana's on the edge and 30 feet away, maybe not even from where Finley and Sophie are sitting is literally someone's house. I have asked to purchase this house, but it's just so funny. It's like, the because the set is huge and the entire set is here and there's just like a neighborhood and like roads. So if you want to know more about what happened when I was on the L Word set, I do have videos upcoming. So make sure you're subscribed to check out those. Oh, wait, what about um, all the houses? Aren't the bungalows here? They're filming right now. Oh, so we they're can't filming. Oh, you should also be quiet. Because it's right, it's right there, right? Yeah. Oh shit, yeah, we should fucking shut up and be quiet. <laughs> so back to Bet and Tina, we've got lots more stuff to talk about. And next up is the Kiki Smith auction. So original fans will remember that these Kiki Smiths did hang in Bet and Tina's West Hollywood house for the first couple of seasons. And then we did have Bet have to auction them off or put them up for sale because when they were going through this difficult financial time in season three, and it really was putting a strain on their relationship. And as we know, oh my God, season three, dumpster fire. 
and this season three is going to be amazing so all is balancing out but when bet had to put the kiki smiths up like her and tina really weren't doing well and we do know that she got them back sometime in the intermedian between the og ending and gen q starting because we did see them in her silver lake house in the internet l word breaking lesbian breaking moment where tina turned up on bet's doorstep in season one episode six loose ends and she called me and you will notice with these two, there's a lot of doorstep stuff. I have covered this before, but we got even more doorstep stuff here and there's way more parallels to talk about. But mark my words now, we are going to get, I just know it in my bones, that we're going to get a porch scene in the finale like we have to that is what we're going out on baby and i can't wait to see it so going back to kiki smith and the auction we do see that tina which which is another meta moment because tina being the only person realizing the worth of the art where they are and as i'm sure a lot of people know laura holloman is a famous artist very successful artist so it's kind of like another little meta moment there but when tina starts bidding on the kiki smith she has a little paddle that has the number 17 on it thousand dollars give me one thousand ten thousand go once going twice and this all ties back to the original as well because you'll remember in the season four finale bet alice and shane steal the massive 17 reasons why sign and this is bet's big romantic gesture we all know season four was when bet and tina started finding their way back to each other tina understood the sign at the time to be the grand romantic gesture and keeping with the theme, I would classify Tina's purchase of the Kiki Smith as her grand romantic gesture. So keeping the little 17 theme going on there. Also last season, Bet did have that speech about it was 17 years since she cheated on Tina and she would regret it the rest of her life. So I think we can say that finally we've moved past that, but that's why I prefer the little 17 reasons sign. I think that's really cute. Also, Tina says that she thinks of the prince of a little bit of us. When I see that print, I think of our old house. I think of us. I didn't want someone else to have a piece of us. And then she says to Bet, do you, well, starts to say, do you want to get out of here? And Bet cuts her off to say yes. And this also reminded me of the OG in season five, episode six, lights, camera, action. Tina? Can I get out of here? So in the original, Bet asks and they go back to Tina's house, but in this one, Tina asks and they go back to Bet's house. Do you want to get out of here? And in the original and the season three premiere, we cut to them and they're both drinking tea in both timelines, both shows. I have so many questions, like, how did you feel, and what happened when you saw her, and just, I want to know everything. I would share everything that you're comfortable with. And we'll talk about the rest of the season three scene in a minute, but in the OG, we do then get one of the very hot Bet and Tina scenes, and everybody dubs that scene the honey honey scene, and in that episode, there are actually two sex scenes, which is very rare for one couple to have that in one episode and that's also the stir fry scene in that episode and i don't know two hot scenes seems to be some sort of it means something so we've got three episodes with them left i don't know a, a hot scene in in two and then a wedding in one that make people pretty happy right so back to bets and they're drinking tea just like in the honey honey one as i mentioned and they're having this conversation about bet's mom and how it unlocked something in bet and she forgave her mom all that insecurity panic anxiety that bet has inside of her seems to have calmed and she's found a bit of relief bet walked around the world making everyone think she had everything together when really she was just 
trying to cover up the panic she feels inside. And this was something that made me think of the season six premiere where Bette has that little conversation with Tina in the car when Angie's been to the hospital. It's one of the things I love about you. Because I don't know how to use it digital at the moment. No. Because you appear to most of the world to be so alpha in control. I know how hard it is for you to cover up the panic that you feel inside. And I mean, anybody who watches the show and, and is a fan knows that to everybody else, like Beth's this strong put together person and she really can fall apart in front of Tina or like be herself. So it is so nice to see that that has even just evolved even more. And I think a lot of that panic and anxiety and fear like her worst fear was losing Tina the person she loves beyond measure and I think she was pushing her away in the beginning and even later on she does this in like a self-sabotage way believing like maybe she's not good enough or that Tina is just gonna leave like her mom because she had learned that connection of the person who taught her how to love that left her. This episode was definitely an examination of the past and all the things that had happened to them, the bad things in their relationship and how they have really gone through it, worked on it, and we've been through it too with you. <laughs> so I do like seeing a lot of these scenes and how in the original they went one way, but now we know that we're in a totally different place, we're in a better place, and that they've both worked on their shit, because in the original it didn't work for good, we had, you know, the, the cheating in season one when Bette still wasn't being open with Tina, season three they still were, were bad, and then season five they did come back and they had done a lot of the work, but according to the show, they, they slipped back into this previous way in the intermediate between the two shows. I mean, I I have a hard time buying that because I thought the, that we were in a good place season six, but if this is, this is the way it has to be to get what we're gonna get at the end of the season, I mean, it's a good bargaining chip because I don't think any of us thought that, that there was gonna be a Bet and Tina wedding, but I'll I'll do my chores if if I get my reward in the end because we knew this happy ending was coming. We've waited so 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 long and we abided by Jennifer Beale's patience request and we pushed through and supported the show because we knew it would all pay off in the end. Eileen Chaikin, the creator of The L Word, has said before that she had no intention of getting Bette and Tina back together after season one of The OG, but then she saw the fan reaction and she did get them back together. But last night at an event in San Francisco, she was saying that with the second half of The OG show and what happened on Gen Q, she didn't know if they would ever get back together, but it seemed the fans knew, and we did. Also, after coming covering the show extensively and knowing everything I know, it is a miracle this happened, <laughs> but I always knew it would. And that's why from day fucking one of Gen Q and this channel, I've repeated that mantra and never ever wavered because now with everything upcoming, it's going to be even better than before. And that is kind of even echoing one of the little lines that we've already got from episode two, like, this is even better than the first time. This is so much better than the first time. I agree. Do you know if they're coming together? Maybe. God, I love the drama though. Which we'll talk about more in just a second. So after seeing all these original scenes playing out in very different ways, we get to the very best moment of not only the episode, but my favorite moment of Generation Q, period.
finally we get them back together and there's so many parallels to the OG especially when Tina returned to the gallery for her earring and they had their first kiss it was very similar to that which I'll put the clip in If you saw my original reaction, you of course know I absolutely loved the ending too with Angie coming in. That was absolutely gold. I loved it so much and I have seriously watched the ending over 50 times and I laugh every single time. I laugh thinking about it now. <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> What the fuck? So very briefly, let's look at the trailer for the upcoming season and some of the things we know. As I've mentioned in this video and some upcoming scenes, we do have a very hot or two very hot scenes coming. And we can even see a quick flash of this in the trailer because we can see the A necklace that Bet and Tina always wear. And you can definitely see this is Bet's hands. Also, I am sure again to my bow, that we're gonna get something flashbacky or parallel to the art gallery meeting scene, the earring stuff in episode two where Bet is having the Marcus Allenwood show. And we do see Tina panicking and saying she has to go. I've got to go. And that is where we're gonna get our Bet running through traffic. Imagine me and you style. And I do think Bet's gonna say, fuck it, I'm going with Tina and we'll go with Tina to Toronto and that will explain the the absence and that's why I keep talking about 9 and 10 because I know they're going to leave it in some sort of way that's very up in the air so I want people to know, don't worry, like we're going to get episodes 9 and 10 and it's going to be amazing so that's just putting that out there again to make sure that people know that we are getting them back for two episodes. Hi, editing Ash here. Just some quick news to drop in where I'm mentioning about the wedding because literally I, I've, I've said a few times, I was on set for episodes nine and 10. So I have footage that I can't share yet, 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 that proves a lot of the things that I'm talking about. So I have to wait till Showtime gives me the clear for that. But I can share other people's stuff that they've put out into the open. So as I've been saying, and, and literally I've been talking about this for months, the fact that Jennifer Beals and Laura Holloman are only in one, two, nine and 10, and then we're getting the wedding. And if you look at this board, I'm going to put this picture on the screen, you can see on the whiteboard. So this is was taken in the costume department. I was in there. I have footage of, of literally me. Like I, I took all a video of like all the walls and stuff because they were very hush hush about the costume stuff because, you know, wedding costumes are obvious. <laughs> They're for a wedding. But there's some things they couldn't hide and the same with the set stuff. So if you look on the whiteboard, it's always the whiteboards, hey? <laughs> so if you look on the whiteboard, it says wedding stunt driver. This was in, I, I know the area, I've been there, like I've said, and this is also like a costume, one of the costume department people's uh, Instagram they posted it on. I know that the most people, especially people that come to this channel already, you know, take my word, but this this is like literal, literal proof <laughs> so do with that information what you will but we have a lot to look forward to now back to past ash for the rest of the video what an absolutely amazing amazing episode i just absolutely loved it of course the bet and tina stuff was my absolute favorite i will be talking about it with chris and jess tomorrow i'm sure we'll be arguing about it <laughs> so make sure that you're subscribed to drinks at dana's i will post it on my youtube channel as well and make sure you're subscribed here because 
it's L word o'clock, it's L word bonanza. We're just going to be posting constant, constant, constant. So make sure you're subscribed here and following over on social media. And as always, make sure to stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.